Welcome to Chip Boyet. Please join with me once again with this episode about a scrubber. Actually, months ago, I've already made a Tagalog or Filipino version about the EGCS or the scrubber. But I received one message requesting me to do another one in English version. So here we are. According to many shaperers, nowadays life on board has become more difficult, more complicated because of many regulations that has come into force. And in order to meet those regulations, a lot of equipments, machineries that has been installed on board, and one of those is the scrubber or it has a technical term of excess gas cleaning system or the EGCS. Actually, this scrubber is not new. The scrubber has been used on board, uh, particularly before in a tanker vessels and some passenger vessels that are constantly trading in uh, a car emission control area. But when the 2020 or IMO 2020 Sulphur Cup regula uh, regulation has come into force or before coming into force, the word scrubber or the scrubber has become popular to the shipping industry and also to the seafarers. Because the scrubber was largely adapted even to the bulk carriers, container vessels, no reefer vessels, in some other vessels uh, trading worldwide 500 gross tonnage and above. Some were asking if the scrubber is mandatory. Actually, it's not. Scrubber is just only one way or means in order to meet the regulation, the uh, 2020 IMO Sulfur Cup regulation. Let's have a short review about this regulation. This regulation limits the sulfur emission into the atmosphere. That when vessel is trading outside the emission control area or ECA, the SO2-CO2 emission ratio should not be over than the control limit or set value uh, that was set by the regulation, which is 21.7% uh, ppm. So in order to meet this uh, emission ratio, the main engine, generator, and auxiliary boiler should consume the fuel of having a sulfur content of not more than a 0.5 sulfur content that when vessel is trading in the ECA or emission control area the regulation has set the control value or set value of a not more than 4.3 percent ppm okay this is the emission ratio in order to meet that emission ratio set by, reg by the regulation our main engine generator and auxiliary boiler should use uh, a fuel of not more than 0.1 sulfur content. There are three ways or means in order to meet the IMO 2020 sulfur cap regulation. Number one is by using the compliant fuel. When I said compliant fuel, just like what I've said a while ago, so when vessel is trading outside the uh, control area or outside ECA, vessel uh, has to meet the emission ratio of not more than 21.7 and vessel has to use the fuel of not more than or not higher than or exceeding 0.5 as sulfur content that while in ECA vessel has to use or engine machineries has to use the fuel of not more than 0.1 sulfur content and that is the compliant fuel second is by using the methanol or LNG which is uh, nowadays the initial cost is still quite costly no the reason why some owners they have they have not choose this one as their option and third is by using the EGCS or the scrubber and this is what we are talking about okay so there are some advantages and disadvantages of having a scrubber on board there are two types of scrubber the dry and the wet scrubber and accordingly uh, the wet scrubber is more efficient than the dry scrubber okay nowadays on board what we are using is the wet scrubber and the wet scrubber is also kind we have also the open loop, we have also the closed loop, and we have the hybrid. When we say the hybrid, this is the combination of open and closed. You can operate this one in a uh, open uh, open loop, and you can operate this one in closed loop also. The reason why we call it hybrid, not compact. In our company, most of our vessels are fitted with uh, open loop. But also, there are some vessels fitted with a hybrid. This is the combination of closed and open loop scrubber. But since most of the vessel is fitted with uh, open loop, so let's discuss about the open loop scrubber. 
This scrubber is designed to remove the harmful substance such as socks no, from the excess gas coming from the main engine, generator, and your auxiliary boiler. Aside from removing the socks, it also removes the harmful elements and some other particulate matters. The socks emission into the atmosphere affects the environment and even the human health. Maybe one of the most important questions is, how does the scrubber work? Okay. From the word scrubber or scrubbing, it is another word of cleaning or removing. So, it is just a simple cleaning or removing the socks from the excess gases. That's it, before emitting it into the atmosphere. So, it's as simple like that. Just removing or cleaning the socks from the excess gas coming from our main engine or generator or the boiler. By the way, socks can be produced by burning a biofuel through a combustion process. Okay, the fuel or the bunker that your main engine or our main engine, generator and boiler being consumed has a, has a sulfur content that when this fuel is being burned inside the combustion chamber of your main engine and generator or inside the furnace of your boiler, that burning process is what we call the combustion process wherein the socks can be produced. Okay, don't get confused about the SO2 and uh, socks. Okay, the socks is sulfur oxide while the SO2 is the sulfur dioxide. The socks also, or sulfur oxide is a general term for oxide of sulfur. It includes the sulfur uh, monoxide, the sulfur trioxide, and the sulfur dioxide. But when burning the biofuel, the most common socks is the SO2, which is the uh, sulfur dioxide. Okay, in this episode, we have a lot of questions to answer. Okay, next is, uh, how does the socks being removed? Okay, so the excess gases from our main engine, generator, or the boiler uh, will pass through the scrubber tower. So on the top of the scrubber tower, it has a nozzle, and this nozzle is spraying a fine spray of seawater. By the way, in open loop, uh, it uses a seawater as a scrubbing element, that while for a closed loop, using uh, fresh water. Okay, but let's continue about the uh, open loop. So when these gases, excess gases containing uh, soxa, sulfur oxide, touches the fine spray of seawater, it will easily react. This uh, sox easily reacts and easily dissolve in form into sulfuric acid. So because of this fine spray of seawater, it is scrubbed, it cleans, it removes the sock so that the gases passing through the scrubber going out to the funnel and to the atmosphere, it listen already the socks or might be some cases actually uh, the sulfur or SO2-CO2 emission ratio become very, very minimal or in some cases become zero. This is how the salt is being removed into the excess gases. It is therefore the excess gases emitting into the atmosphere meets the uh, 2020 IMO sulfur cup regulation. Then another question comes, okay, we have already the scenario that the excess gases emitting to the atmosphere has already meet the uh, sulfur cap regulation because the emission ratio become less. But the question is, when the socks touches the water, it dissolves, it reacts, it dissolves and form into sulfuric acid. Then, in open loop, it will directly discharge to sea. So meaning to say, the water or the wash water, we call that wash water, the water that, uh, that you have used in washing or removing the socks is we call the wash water. This wash water is acidic. Okay. Now, maybe you were asking before, why seawater? Why not fresh water? The reason why we are using seawater in an open loop system, it's because naturally the seawater has a high alkalinity. In that alkalinity has the ability to neutralize acid. So now maybe before you were uh, thinking, why seawater? Why not fresh water? Okay, another question is, uh, when the vessel is trading in the area uh, where in the fresh water in seawater meets or estuaries or river, can we use this scrubber? In our EGCS system, you can see the pH of inlet water the inlet seawater and the outlet or the wash water. Uh, normally, 
you can see the 7 point, uh, 7 7.5 to 8 point something of inlet pH because the seawater pH has an average of about 8.1 and uh, sometimes if you have the inlet uh, seawater inlet pH of about 8.1 uh, it depends on the uh, condition of EGCS but in normal condition a wash water pH is around about 6 point something 5 point something yeah 5 to 6 uh, that is the range but the seawater alkalinity uh, it's not the same let's say for the uh, in Atlantic Ocean it is about 2100 2, and in Baltic Sea is just only about 500 and in St. Petersburg is about 480 so when vessel is uh, sailing when sailing and using the EGCS in Atlantic Ocean it could be the pH is about more than 8 8 and could be the wash water is about 5 point something to 6 point something but when you are using the EGCS inside the Baltic Sea it will drastically drop it could be the pH uh, value of uh, your seawater inlet is just only about 5 point something and the wash water is only about 3 point something another question is can we use or run the EGCS in fresh water or in river, estuaries, or in some areas wherein the seawater and freshwater meets? Actually, no, cannot. It's because the freshwater doesn't have the ability to neutralize acid. Otherwise, you are discharging an acidic water that is harmful to marine life. The reason why the EGCS maker has set the uh, alarm limit that when the uh, dis uh, discharge water, wash water, pH, is below 3.0 it will automatically stop or uh, give an alarm you not know, to stop using the EGCS of course using an EGCS has advantages and disadvantages okay let's talk about some and these advantages uh, one is the hassle hassle in the sense that this is a new machinery new equipment on board so hassle for the owner hassle also for the crew because uh, you have to take care, you have to maintain the good operation, keeping in a good operation. And using the EGCS is an owner's option. Some owners choose to use the compliant fuel than using the EGCS because according to them, it is less hassle. Less hassle for the owner, less hassle for the crew, which is actually correct. But using the compliant fuel, the price difference is quite relatively high than the uh, high sulfur FO. When you, you, when you are using the EGCS, uh, the fuel that you are consuming is the high sulfur fuel. So normally in some ports, it has the price difference of about $300, 200 to $300. Okay, uh, let's have the calculation. Uh, let's put in average of $200 price difference per metric tons. Let's say that your vessel is a cape size uh, vessel, a dry bulk cape size having a daily average consumption of about 35 metric tons running in eco speed so 35 times 200 dollars how much that is a day that the owner or charterer is saving so let's say your vessel is running uh, about 20 days in average in a month so 7,000 times 20, that is In one month, the owner or the charter uh, are saving fuel about How about in one year? So this is how the owner save in the fuel And this is one of the advantages of using the EGCS Another question is, can we operate the EGCS at ECA region? Actually, yes we can operate the EGCS provided that we have to change the operation mode from a global to ECA or 0 0.1. Different maker has a different term uh, terminologies. Let's say for um, uh, some other maker outside the ECA, they call the operation mode 0 0.5. Some uh, maker called it global. So. In some maker, they call the ECA as ECA or SECA or 0 0.1. It 
it depends on the maker but you have to change the operation mode into ECA mode or 0.1 then you can operate the EGCS while in ECA region but there's but uh, there are some ports that prohibit or ban the uh, use of the EGCS but not all of the ports some ports uh, prohibit to use the open loop um, inside their territorial waters this is inside the 12 nautical miles uh, while some ports um, limit or prohibit the use of open loop inside the port limit. So this is at 3 nautical miles. So the best thing is the master should ask the local agent whether the EGCS can run or it is prohibited to use inside the port limits or the ter uh, their territorial waters. Because some of the ports or some nations or some countries, uh, this matter is still under deliberation. So it could be after one month, they will change their, uh, their rules or local rules and they may also prohibit. So master should always ask the local agent regarding this one you know, in order always to comply with the regulation. Another question is, what if your EGCS fails and cannot be restored within one hour? As per rule, the consumption should change over to compliant fuel So while doing the troubleshooting. So main engine and generator has continuously uh, using the compliant fuel while in the, uh, in the progress or in the process of troubleshooting. So this is in, co in collaboration with the crew the, uh, and the manager and it also includes the maker if necessary. But the question is what if the trouble is really too difficult and cannot be restored because it needed an spare parts to restore but vessel doesn't have the uh, available spare parts but another question is what if the compliant fuel on board is not sufficient enough to reach the calling port so there are so many preparation there are so many repair plans in report that has to be made by the vessel and the manager to the flag into the authorities then on the calling port when the spare parts are technician uh, they will execute the repair plan or in case that it still cannot be repaired then has to bunker the compliant fuel on that port but the worst scenario is what if in that port there is no available compliant fuel but nowadays uh, it's actually a very rare scenario but if worse comes to worse that this scenario uh, will happen uh, there is still a last recourse and that is what we call the FONAR or the fuel uh, oil non-ability uh, non-availability report okay this is a phone okay and this is a form of letter or document uh, to send to the authority uh, informing that in this port uh, there's no available compliant fuel so whatever the fuel is available then this will uh, the vessel will take thank you for watching chip boyet for more technical videos like this just visit my youtube channel chip boyet and surely you will learn a lot on the technical aspect. And you can also visit my um, Facebook page, uh, Marine Real Talk in Chief Boyet. Again, thank you, good day, and God bless us all.